channel this is Beaver Roll um, today I'm making the video of uh, necromancer build the one I promised um, you can see the rooming video probably gonna be on a card or um, link in description so this is a core necromancer build and I believe um, core necromancer is really a strong place that it's one of the best necromancer you could play except for a specific weakness that is gonna be described inside the video okay um, I already put the link to uh, the build itself the trade specialization but I'm gonna explain it quickly on how it work together first this is really strong build against power and condition at the same time why let's start with condition first thing we take is first attack inside shroud when you enter shroud the first attack you do will transfer two condition to your enemy that's one we take master of corruption so now our healing skill only on 20 second cooldown consume condition so every 20 seconds we can remove all condition and heal for them not 30 you see without this trait like i used to play terror before it's 30 now it's 20. why did i stop playing terror mancer and remove to master of corruption because unless you have a lot of fear like use um, something like spectral ring or whatever you only get a spike of damage and life force and that's it like only uh, shroud skill uh, 3 this one would give you some fear and the mark from staff and that's it so it's a little bit spike damage and more life force but after that's done on the other hand all the corruption skills like blade gland like your healing skill uh, like cross of poison cloud is now way less cooldown and that make you a lot aggressive on playing and could give you more damage since you can spam more poison since you can use blade gland a lot more so only the spike in damage different but other than that this is even higher damage so uh, now we said you can remove condition from this uh, because of master of corruption you can remove more and our mark 4 removes 3 condition to every target hits and also um, uh, the dagger 4 deathly swarm it can give 3 condition to every uh, opponent it hits it actually remove 1 I guess but to 3 targets uh, no it's actually removed to everyone okay so all that remove condition and the best trait you can have for a necromancer unholy martyr every time you enter shroud you take condition from other player around you allies and every time you leave you turn three of them to life force seven for everyone that's 21 percent life force a spectral walk remove um, two, one condition every two seconds for four percent life force so as you see you are really tanky against condition in a way that you can hurt your opponent with it give it to them and that make you give you more damage and put them in worse situation how we are strong against power first we have 30k health and 25k life force i don't have it full right now but 25k that's make a, and a lot of toughness too like we have 2800 armor that's a lot of toughness and we have access to a lot of protection through this skill with a lot of life force it's one of our main sources uh, and we have a lot of healing that can compensate for the damage we take through vampire presence and parasitic contingent i always go for parasitic contingent because it gives you this extra nudge of healing that can make something to this much health that you need you would have extremely much more damage uh, if you take this one but i find the healing is better to be honest and make me survive more this one's only work on melee and you try to avoid melee as much as you can and i will describe why later you try to completely control a zoom or be cutting so it's not really practical it could be used uh, don't get me wrong but the healing is just better so we have a, uh, movement speed that all the time is really good through this trait you can still go with the lesser saint of vampirism but after it got nerfed or fixed that it doesn't heal the active heal only the siphon uh, 
I don't think it's really worth it that much. I mean, it will still give you a lot of heal, but uh, movement speed is much better. Uh, for Soul Reaving, I take Soul Reaving for the marks and for this trait. And I will say something specifically about this trait that you need to consider. For start, now our marks are unblockable and it uh, generates us life force 3% for every mark, every one of them. And that's great. Now we have a lot of, you can get out of shroud and reset your life force in no time and enter in like 10 seconds. The, only the cooldown. This trait is kinda necessary because you have 25k life force. And side life shroud, you would have this careful condition, this for fear, this for condition, and that's it. Once you spam them, you would have nothing to do. Okay. Let's generate some life force uh, for demonstration. That would be it. Mm. So we need to auto attack to be able to pressure our opponents inside life force, not just uh, tank whatever damage they throw at us. Okay. So that's why this trait is necessary. But we can talk about leaving it. For why? For that one. Put in the grid. The most weakness problem in Core Necromancer that if your opponent put it in consideration will kill you is you have no access to stability. And inside Shroud you can't protect yourself against CC. That means you can be CC bombed. You can be chained from an attack to another to another and only at two stun breaks you'll be running. And that's it. Inside the Shroud you would have to either leave Shroud or take whatever stun you got Full duration, 3 seconds done, CC after another, so you'd waste this entire life force bar without hitting a single hit. And that's a problem. This skill would give you a little notch, since it gives you extra stun break and 3 seconds stability, sure to be able to hit other people. Only the fear inside the shroud, this skill is insta-cast, you can hit it even uh, while you start. But like I said, sacrificing burn on auto attack would make the shroud is kinda useless in the first place. Only like 3 skill and leave. For 25k no one would finish your 25k life force in 3 skill. So that's why I go with it. You can still go fear of, de uh, fear of death for extra life force and fear duration, it's still good. But I take this one for higher healing to be more tanky. I have extra vitality and I use the food of regenerating health and it's instead of it uh, this one tropical bearman cake instead of it healing for um, 85 it now here for 94 uh, a little bit healing uh, overall is kind of good so I take it but you can definitely take this one 10% healing even when you have support like firebrand or whatever he would heal you for more so I would Consider this one at least if I'm playing with people, if you want to take this one. So that's generally the idea of the build. Uh, the weapon we use staff, like you saw, and we use um, scepter dagger for condition removal, corrupt, and more bleeding. This build lack on corrupt, and that's another problem for an necromancer build. You can corrupt one boon through this one, and two boon for a single target on this one. And that's all the corrupt you have. So against something like Brock Engineer, especially Holo, uh, which playing um, protection, the trait that uh, every time he grants protection, uh, turn um, a condition to a boon or technically remove a boon, but they play it with uh, another trait that called Purity of Purpose. He would have a lot of boon and he would spam cleanses. You can't do anything. I mean, even if you have a lot of corruption, like if you use them. Um, a corrupt boon, he would still just reset all the condition to another boon. It cannot be defeated. Uh, but in generally, heavy boon classes you would kinda struggle against, but you would still have corruption. Most condition player doesn't have corruption, like droid build, doesn't have it at all. Uh, so we go scepter dagger and staff. My full gear uh, armor is trailblazer. My weapons are dire, toughness, vitality, and condition. Blizzard only extra expertise. Uh, I use what I kind of found. Uh, I have a trailblazer for um, rings 
uh, amulet is dire and trailblazer back and this one other shaman a vitality major and healing condition so i have some healing power at this now we discussed the weakness about stability and that's the highest weakness in this bit no stability only two stun break you can be bumped to this so that's the worst situation you need to avoid cc as much as possible one wrong cc from stills from a mirage or see if that can catch you can cost you a fight you, as tank as you are you can be grinded down since necro doesn't have um, a way to prevent damage completely or access to vigor or mirror evades that put it in a disadvantage uh, for tricks about this spectral walk everybody knows this but i so i said it anyway would work like two stun breaks you would kite and fight if you get another cc board back so it already it doesn't stun break you but it remove you from the damage or the area someone hitting you so it work like two and this one another stun break and that's all you have you can control zones through marks like if you're fighting a thief or something melee that you would have to get in one of them and he would be hit it if he trying to hit you from stairs you would see the trigger and you can keep kiting if you avoid a backstab or something and you will still be able to use this skill to prevent projectile from hitting you and apply weakness and poison it's really great and it's unblockable too just like your mark all this unblockable and the last one of course if you're line of sighted or trying to uh, put fear on someone and you hit, hit it or down players can be really great button in them a lot of damage no one can boost through it it has a lot of damage that if someone trying to revive someone through it they will probably end up boosted second um my choice of rune since i have trailblazer i use rune of the crite i have a lot of bleed duration 100 percent how uh, you see trailblazer crite rune and I use Sigil of uh, Mans and Agony. Okay, actually I'm not using any something, I'm not supposed to use any, yeah. I'm using um, Smoldering actually. This was not the same gear I used. Anyway, so why? Because I have already 100% as you see without Agony. So I use only Malice for all my condition, my Torment, my Poison, my uh, Immobilize through Shout 5. Everything malice is really useful, and I use smoldering for the burning because now the burning is uh, with corruption, it's actually reached almost uh, 1k and 900. Uh, if you don't have access to Trailblazer, if you are free to play player and you want to play Cornicromancer, it's okay, you can have Dire and you would switch this for Agony because you would have Cry to give you 50%. Malice will give you 10, now that's 60, and this trait would give you 20, now 80, and Agony would give you 20, that 100 bleed duration, and extra 10 for every other condition. On staff, I go with Malice and Corruption. If you have Trailblazer, you don't have to go Smoldering, you don't have to go with Corruption, you can kind of change those for something like Geomancy, uh, which trigger bleed around you every time you would change a weapon, you would go with Cleansing, for uh, three condition cleanse on weapon swap and that will give you even more cleansing so it's kind of optional but i would at least stick with malice for the higher condition duration it's really good um, so another tip or something a lot of people do always kill those guys before you leave if you don't have life force if you've been killed and came back to waypoint don't leave without life force Always fill it if it's possible and use staff since it will give you much more. Well, that's what you get about life force. It is the most important thing you have and a really good resource. Use it wisely and keep in consideration every tick about it, like how much you can fill it. And um, if you're inside shroud, if you're using skill, I would usually get inside shroud if I'm sure I can trigger fear or I'm under a lot of pressure. I would start with fear immediately hit this one so i already linked my opponent and revealed him if you see for a mirage go for one attack and people was already evading probably and then this one to trigger a higher bleed or whatever sometimes you can sustain yourself through this but you're not power class so this skill kind of pointless 
I would leave without completely draining, but sometimes I would, especially if I have condition, since leaving would turn three condition into 21% life force. So this is it guys for the build, I hope you like it and give it a try, and watch the roaming one, the roaming video, and I hope you, it give you more ideas about how this build would actually work, uh, see it in action. Okay guys, now the commentary to explain and show specific details about the build, the things I already explained the build in action. I take this tower with this blue already ticket, so only a scrubber came for me. I start to mitigate any projectile with this to protect myself faster from any damage. He engages with me, uh, trigger the blast, I kite, take in a projectile barrier, cross of poison cloud. I corrupt his stability, if you noticed. And then I I will keep doing this, but he will reset through AED. And actually, in the fight, I didn't really notice the AED, uh, which is really funny. I will know who I am. Anyway. Uh, I kept doing this triggering more and more, but he didn't have much condition removal, so it wasn't really that much hard fight. And uh, the poison cloud stopped him from stopping my finisher. I get immediately attacked by the firebrand, his condition, so he was put a lot of burn, I instantly give him his burn. He uh, put more and more on the auto attacks, but that won't do much damage inside the shroud. So I leave Shroud, I start using Staff to put more condition, a lot of condition so he can't remove. Uh, but he pushed me back. Uh, so and now Scourge come in, fear me, so I board back. The Scourge support the Firebrand. But as you see, I keep putting con a lot of condition to prevent it from moving. Now I enter the Shroud, I give condition. You see, I'll leave Shroud and my condition will be removed. Most of it at least. Exactly. I put uh, Course of Poison Cloud again to put more condition. I mean, at this point, it's only for condition. I give them my Condi. They, as a Scourge bot again, I remove it to the heal. And I still focus on the Firebrand. Because he would probably have uh, no cooldown anymore. Now he's going down. I need to stop the Scourge from reviving him, but the Scourge doesn't go to it, actually. So I spam some condition on him. I put the Poison on the down. And if the Scourge walk in it, it will be a lot of damage. I remove some condition with the stun break of uh, Spectral Walk. I remove the rest. I get engaged with an ally thief. I think he's a thief. Anyway, uh, at this point, the fight was over. This show you exactly how powerful a core necro can be. With a lot of damage, damage. And um, yeah, it's uh, you keep damaging and removing condition and give it to people. So if you fight in condition players, this make your fighting easier. Now for the next fight against um, the same scrubber, but this time is not about the fight. I want to show specific detail. You see, I start with the staff, unlike I usually start with the scepter if it's possible. But this is actually to keep zoom to push those mobs uh, and put pressure on all of them. Why? You see, I line of sight here, about blade glands. Now I heal through all that damage the smoke's taking. My health will keep bumping up. If he step in, he die. I, I, I completely control this area. If he come in melee range or try to actually hit me, he dies. He knows that, so he doesn't engage, and he just leaves, especially when my other friend or ally come here. The third one is the Assault Pistol Thief is like the most annoying 1v1. I'm trying to revive the Thief, but this guy can pressure through Blake Land because he's evading, 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 evading and non-stop. But uh, only a single frame can make me put a lot of pressure on him, as you notice. But he keep interrupting and stopping my heal, so I need to control zoom. You see how the mark? If he step in, he triggers the mark. And that's a problem for him. I have full life force now since he triggered my marks. He come back up trying to juke me or something. I don't know uh, when he came down here, but he bought it with a sword. I can still apply pressure on him with fear. There's still enough windows. And as you see, he goes down. So that about how to fight and still stay around. Any pressure you can put on them, it's again about controlling an entire area. So I hope you find this helpful guys and I'll be seeing you again.